So I just want to talk about some projects I've done, and some of them pure fun, and some of them actually really a benefit to society. So the first one ever, I was a student, and the professor came to me and said, Jans, I need to do a, an experiment, and um, I need you to come up with a way to make people feel really bad or really good. So can you come up with anything? So I thought about it a little bit, and then I came up with a game called Mastermind. Now, everyone in this room has played Mastermind, and you probably even have played the game with the numbers. Yeah? So what I did is I created a game where I could control yeah, where the subject would be finished in three moves or in, say, seven, eight moves. Yeah? And so the experiment would start. We put heart, uh, uh, um, heart measurement stuff on, and, and we, we tested adrenaline, et cetera. And so the, the, the people would start with their training and they would do really well or they would do really bad, yeah? And then we said the real experiment started. Of course, we started at the beginning, but we said now the real experiment starts. And then people that were really well suddenly went really bad in the real experiment or vice versa. And so we were able, by doing that, to test the uh, effects of feeling bad and stress on heart rate, on your brain waves, adrenaline, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the, the one thing that forever sticks with me is that, to some extent, a psychological theory called attrition, uh, attribution theory is right. Because of the six, 16 women where suddenly everything went wrong, every single woman thought, OK, well, I, you know, I felt tired and it suddenly didn't work anymore. Whereas every guy said, you know, it wasn't me, it was the computer. Yeah? So this is one of these few rare cases where men are actually right. Yeah? All right. So there was my, I was a student, and then I started doing my thesis work. And uh, my thesis advisor gave me the task to build a computer model of a human driver, where I had to take these books that were paid for. Well, I paid $600 for them, but the US military and NASA spent probably 40, 50 million dollars to generate these books. And they have every fact about human performance. If I reach for this chair, there's a law that you can put in the computer. Yeah? I know exactly what it takes to get my eye from this point to this point. I know how big, big my functional field is, my peripheral field, my wider fields. And all these facts would go into a computer model that was built by a famous uh, AI professor called Alan Newell in uh, Carnegie Mellon, where I stayed for a year just to train on that system. And so I'd been working on that, on a model that learns how to control the stick shift, the accelerator, uh, the brakes, uh, um, control your arms, control your eyes, stay within your lane, deal with other traffic, do navigation, all at the same time. So basically, I was working on multitasking human drivers. Um, and I, I spent five years on that. But I never had feedback about what real human drivers do. So finally, we, uh, we got a big grant from the European Union to do a study to test how drivers go through traffic. So we had an ca instrumented car where the brake and every, every part of your car was measured. Then we had a camera pointed at your eyes, a cameras pointed at the road. And then we had 16 drivers, uh, beginning drivers, that got their driver's license through us. And at the end of every lesson, they had to go through the same set of um, intersections. And then we had 16 experienced drivers that did the same uh, route yeah, for, for a number of times. And then we did an analysis, and we learned a lot about what real human beings do. But the biggest thing was that I could run my model, and I could compare it to real, actual drivers. And it was the beautiful, beautiful uh, harmony between the two. So I've, I think I never was so happy as when I was actually got the results back. Um, but one thing I really learned is that um, a beginning driver, the biggest task is where do I look at what time? Whereas for an experienced driver, he needs to look only 10% of the time to the road. For the rest, he can do whatever he wants. And we found out that what people do is they basically look at the opposite sex yeah, when they're driving, experienced drivers. So anyway, that was my big. And then finally, something yeah, that will benefit society. Yeah. We worked for now for four years on a, on a cognitive computing platform for healthcare that helps us predict diseases, uh, find the best treatments plan, and discover the true cost of care. Okay? So you probably don't know what a cognitive computing platform is. It's the thing that won Jeopardy. Yeah? It's what Google does internally, building a knowledge graph, learning about every person, every product, every company, every event in the world. Yeah? 
put it all in a computer system, add human knowledge to it so it can reason about the world. Yeah? So big AI is coming. So we, have, we built one of those platforms for healthcare. So we have data from, from 2.7 billion, 2.7 million patients, 10 years of data, and we basically put everything we can get about the patient in the computer. If we give them an iPad after they got out of the hospital, we get their data. They have Fitbits. We know their genetic makeup. We know the family tree. They have things implanted in their body that generate data. They have electronic medical records. They generate, generate a lot of data in the ICU. So we have this big, big platform, worked for several years on it. But does it actually work? But here's a little story. In the beginning of 2015, um, a friend of mine gave his son, four-year-old son, a spoon of peanut butter. Yeah? And 30 minutes later, he was in the ER, and they barely saved his life. And then the, um, the doctor later looked at the charts, and he said, oh, you know, I could have predicted that. This kid has dermatitis and asthma. And this comes always in threes. So my friend got really angry why I didn't test him. Yeah? But the doctor said, no, the kids don't like to test. Anyway, he came to me because he knows I have all that data. And he um, said, Jans, can you check if that is really true? Can you find it in your data? And so I took all the symptoms of every patient, and I did a whole bunch of machine learning stuff on it and statistics, put that back in the database. And then for the first time, I actually did this query. This is a, a, a visual query where you say, if you have allergy to peanuts, then give me the top five other things that you might have. Yeah? And I'm doing that query. And I, got, I almost fell off my chair, because I got exactly what the doctor said. Yeah? If you have allergy to peanuts, you have a 210 times higher chance to have dermatitis yeah? or asthma or another form of asthma or dermatitis again, or acute upper respiratory infections. So it was amazing. Yeah? You work for so many years, you, you get a question, you test on your data, and it confirms what a doctor told you. Now, by the way, this doctor knew it, but in the end of 2015, we had this paper come out, this study, that said, you know, there's a new study suggests that benefit from testing kids with asthma for peanut allergy. So science yeah, is just picking up on this. But with our platform that we now have, I have literally 20,000 types of diseases I can relate to anything else. So we can start writing scientific papers now about almost any disease and what it relates to. Anyway, so this is um, so that we can now, if you go to the doctor, the doctor can usually only look in your past, yeah? But we're building now a future tab in the doctor's screen so that he can also click on that tab and he sees the top things that you might get in the near future. And that was my story. So uh, for me, AI has always been incredibly rewarding. I've, I've seen now what it can benefit for applications in healthcare. And yeah, you just think about what it will do for your competition. So thank you very much.